It's my honor, a very, it's actually a privilege to introduce Vic Neufeld. He is the CEO of Afria. He's probably the guy who needs the least introduction in this room. When I brought the idea of doing a B2B conference in Leamington, sent an email to Vic. His enthusiasm, uh, to quote a famous coach in the area, he had an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. He responded to me, he said, not only will I keynote, we'll be your platinum sponsor, which is never something the CFO wants the CEO to say before we negotiate. So uh, I thank you for that. I really do thank you for that. His, his thoughts on, on why we should do this uh, blew me away. I was, his enthusiasm was great. I feel very humbled and fortunate to have Vic caught kick off the very first weekend conference. He's a seasoned executive navigating a path in a very, very new industry. AFRI is a multi-billion dollar business with greenhouses rooted in Windsor, Essex. In just four short years, his partners, John Cervini, and I know Coley's hiding under the lights there somewhere, uh, have taken their company, AFRI, from very humble beginnings, and, and they are humble about their beginnings. They are. I, I don't know if they can continue to be humble about their future. And they have taken it to a very, being a very successful public company. Vic credits his drive, passion, and energy with the lessons he learned over the years working on the family farm. Before we bring Vic onto the stage, though, uh, this past summer, the canalists were, were very privileged. Uh, we went out to Broken Coast, spent a couple days out there shooting a video. And if you haven't seen our documentary video, you're going to see the teaser today. It was our very first post ever on our, our new website, The Canalists. .ca blog, and uh, so if you allow me a minute before Vic comes out here, we'd love to show, show you our latest due diligence. This was our pilot project. It's only the teaser. It's only the trailer. It's boots on the ground. It's educational. It's informational. It's due diligence that you have to do if you're an investor in this industry. So with that, please roll it. Due diligence does not stop at your keyboard and monitor. You must put boots on the ground. And to optimize the boots on the ground, it is best they are worn by a crew that talk corporate finance and walk cannabis. From the boardroom to the dispensary. We found many winners, but this is the one I truly believe is going to really blow everyone away. I see why you speak so highly. <laughs> this it really is the, our favorite. I mean, this is the best one. It's gorgeous looking broccoli. In the 30-minute documentary, you'll learn the origins of BC Bud. You'll get walked through from the very start of Broken Coast pro uh, uh, process, which is the mother room, all the way through trimming, through the lab, all the way to the end. So we encourage you to, to take a look at it. But without further ado, let's get the learning started. Come on up here, Vic. Thanks a lot, brother. You got this knocking Good. out, man. Excellent. Guten Morgen, meine Herren und Damen. Und eine herzliche Willkommen zu alle, ja? That's for the German investors out there. Before I begin the formal part of my address, a few housekeeping items, if I may. Um, for many years, back in my Jameson days and the four and a half years at Afria, people want to ask me about my background. I keep telling them, I'm just a simple farm boy from Leamington, Ontario. And Leamington where? Ladies and gentlemen, as the crow flies two, two kilometers that way is my family peach farm, no longer peaches. Forty years later, after leaving the farm, I now find my business home two kilometers that way at beautiful 245 Talbot Street West, Leamington, Ontario. Innovation is defined many ways, and I'm going to suggest to you, if imitation is any form of flattery, 
Innovation started in early 2013 by some no-name Italian guy named Coley Cacciavallani, and spell that without looking at it, in a R&D little, crappy little greenhouse on his campus, right next to all of the beautiful flowers he grew, and he started to grow, I think, four to 500 plants under the old MMPR regulations uh, with two license holders. And it was the beginning of an idea. How can he grow something that otherwise, for decades and decades, was grown indoor? I'm going to suggest to you, Afria began the innovation journey when we had then, as we do now, and as we will tomorrow, continue to grow, cultivate premium bud in a greenhouse in beautiful Leamington, Ontario. Last housekeeping, at the end if we have time, go blue. Great game Saturday at the big house. Um, a revenge tour. A revenge. Um, if there's time for a QA, and uh, I'll gladly take some questions. So let's begin. <clears throat> Quick industry overview and then the AFRIA strategy, our vision, and what, what you should be looking forward to around the corner. Timeline. I'm not going to dwell on each one, but we know where October 17th uh, brought us to. Uh, recreational, but on a, on a limited scale. Uh, dried flour, pre-rolls, oils, sprays, certain topicals. Um, if one looks at the underground economy, uh, six, eight billion, let's call it seven billion. Bill Blair, back during his tax, task force days, indicated that his success rate would be 50% bringing that much from underground to above ground. Um, it was a worthy target. Uh, I think they've now adjusted, uh, given certain supply chain issues out of the box. I think a 30% conversion in the first year would be more realistic. And I've now heard media talking about an 80% conversion factor over the next three or four years. That can happen, but something else has to happen. Health Canada, public safety, justice, have to come to terms with and really understand the consumer's demand going forward. That's $7 billion of underground economy. There's a billion dollars sitting there, presently being serviced by organized crime, called vape pens. There's another $1.5 billion of certain infused products, beverages, foods, chocolates, suckers, gummy bears, etc. None of that is on the table today. Bill C-45, though, does allow for the next 12 months to evolve, and Health Canada does have the regs. Uh, they just got to create the policies to introduce that. That has to happen for this industry to take it to the next step. And it will happen. It's a matter of when, not if. And that's why I'm saying the expanded, recreational, diversified, uh, this, this is part of the journey that the consumer will be demanding. If not, all of those dollars will continue to be spent to underground illegal dispensaries, etc. Joe on the street corner. That is not meeting the objectives as laid out by the task force and by our prime minister. As I said, 30% now is the new conversion rate. 80% uh, is, is where it could possibly go to. But it really, really needs both federal and provincial alignment on what forms of infused products will be allowed. It's, it's very important, and, and, and not to necessarily put a cap on certain levels of THC. Uh, it has to speak to the consumer's demands. Anybody that's been involved in the CPG space, it's not about who your company is and your formulation, it's about understanding the consumer and bringing products that they want to buy, not necessarily what we want to sell. There's a, uh, a tickler on this slide, and I'd rather just get it uh, on the table today right now. Pricing will be part of the journey. I can share the Afria side of the story. I think many other licensed producers are pretty well in the same range of pricing. 
Uh, and I can talk about SAQ because they've been very valued partners and probably the most progressive province, the provincial regulator, when it comes to recreational adult use retail. Our average blended price into, into the, the rec channel was about $5 a gram. A tick below, but let's use five. When you roll that up and add the operating costs and margin at retail level, the $1 excise tax, and the HST, you're somewhere around $9.5 a gram out the door to the consumer. Again, this is average blended. Uh, few are lower, some are higher, but on, on average. SAQ came back and said, we need out the door to our Quebec consumer $7.35. Why? Why that number? Quebec has their own brand of organized crime called Hell's Angels. These guys are no longer leather coats, ponytail, Harleys. They got business suits on. They absolutely know economics. They, 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 they really have understood the, the pricing mechanism and how to maintain the loyalty of their consumers, illegal consumers. At the time, HA had already dropped their pricing at street level in Montreal to $7 a gram. About a year and a half, two years earlier, they were nine to 10 bucks, then eight, now, then seven. So SAQ had a real task in front of them, pricing, is going to be important. Not one licensed producer came to the table with the price point that they wanted. We were all in and about the $5 range. And by the way, SIQ accepted uh, six LPs uh, to begin the journey recreational in their province. They indicated that the pricing will continue to be compressed. Organized crime are smart people. Make no uh, bones about it. They, they know how to capture the pocketbook of their consumer. Today, that same $7 is below $6 already. So SAQ is waiting, wanting, screaming for one or more licensed producers to come to the table not just to mitigate the existing supply chain issues we're all experiencing today, but in the short to medium term, how do they come up with a pricing mechanism that thwarts organized crime? I can tell you, as some of you may have read, have known, have toured, the Afria story, as we continue to expand on our completion of part four, part five at Afria one, and a retrofit at a free a diamond, we will absolutely be, be hitting it out of the park when it comes to cost um, erosion of uh, per gram basis. We will be the first LP, uh, I think, I hope, to go back to Jean-Francois, the head of SAQ, and tell him, here's our new price points. The consumer's pocketbook will have a major positioning when it comes to uh, sale and profitability, brand awareness and brand popularity as time marches on. We launched five brands. You see them at the bottom. We have spent a year and a half understanding the various consumer profiles, targeting the sweet spot of who they are, where they spend their entertainment time, their entertainment dollar, how big is their purchasing basket in different retail outlets. Understood what were key drivers, was it premium quality experience or way down at the other end of the uh, zone, it was I just want something to try. So we launched five brands, Soleil was the first, Soleil speaks to the novice, the passive risk taker. We introduced Riff, became an edgier brand. Good Field, the good supply company, value brands. And ultimately, as the video showed, um, one of our leading pillars of brands, Broken Coast, uh, the premium of premium BC Bud. When you look at the curve 
and understand where the, the pricing and our costing, production costs come into play, you can see that the further out you go, the broken coast, it's more premium position, premium pricing. It costs a bit more per gram, uh, given the, the TLC that uh, John and Kevin and the team out on Vancouver Island uh, put into um, the, 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 the product they grow. It's very important to understand who your consumer is. Without that, you're, you're just putting spaghetti against the wall. And, and that, that's not a good long-term strategy. But let's go beyond Canada. Two years ago, I think one of the first licensed producers we started to sprout our wings. We wanted to look at a, at a global perspective. And we chose at that time a country that was very close to the Canadian Health Canada standards. We looked at Australia. Their TGA, Therapeutic Goods Authority, uh, was very close to the Canadian standards in many, many ways. I had a lot of experience dealing uh, with uh, their nutritional side uh, back in my Jameson vitamin days. And so what we ended up doing is hooking up with an old friend of mine from way back in the day uh, in Australia that had this science play called MedLab. That eventually morphed into another retail and in-country cultivator and a significant investment we made in Althea. Why, why did we look elsewhere? We understood that first market movers were gonna be important. Those companies that entrench themselves with the right quality perspective, the story that is supported by, by facts, uh, will really start to gain traction with health regulators in different countries. So again, Australia being the first, but as you can see, we are now in 10 countries at various levels of business penetration. Uh, look at the numbers, 200 million. If you now start adding a lot of the Latin American countries, the numbers uh, of potential consumers, medical first, eventually some of these countries moving into recreational adult use. It's a tremendous opportunity when you look at little Canada at 30 some million people. It's, uh, it's exciting to know that the bench strength that we have uh, brought to the table at, at Afria and developed and, and the skills they bring allows us now to really spread our wings. And yes, Germany is very, very high on our list. We're spending a lot of time and effort and energy uh, and funding to make our vertical plan uh, work once the health authorities there uh, open up the, uh, the tendering process for in-country cultivation, which is now scheduled to be near the end of November. And a great team we have there. Uh, that came with the Novera acquisition and, uh, and, and, and very exciting. But let's just go through a few other countries while I'm speaking of across the pond. Italy. Italy is slowly moving toward the right path of medical. They call it CBD light, which is the introduction of CBD from hemp, but eventually there's also a lot of conversation now happening with CBD from, from real cannabis plants. Um, Germany is a country that out of the box is only indoor, and so thank goodness uh, the Broken Coast identity helps us tremendously on, on the engineering design and cultivation in, in our facility we're building in northern Germany. Italy has indicated greenhouse is very acceptable. So again, we're on a path there of acquiring <coughs> a greenhouse campus, <coughs> excuse me, and doing a major retrofit. Italy is a is an insignificant country of export sales today. It has the explosive ability if you are one of the first or the only that enters that race on in-country cultivation. We have nurtured many, many relationships, uh, not just government, but also the military. And, and again, so this is the, the vision of taking the Afria footprint story in Leamington, Ontario, greenhouse, who we are, how we built this company, and moving it into other countries. I could talk about the Netherlands and Denmark, Lesotho. There's, there's many opportunities out there. But you have to be committed, and you better be innovative in terms of how you penetrate each different country. Um, politics is different. Their, their regulatory uh, health 
standards are different, so you really have to uh, bring on the right leadership to, to, to navigate these, these various pathways. Craig, I'm not here to talk about the LP, A, B, and C in terms of who to buy and who, who to short, but I can tell you who's going to win. <laughs> that, that's over there with a coffee in my hand. When you, when you look at, to us, the four pillars of, of asset that you need built within your company, and I'm not going to go through the slide in detail, but leadership stands out as number one. I think as some of you read last week, uh, in fact, um, the release went out Friday morning before our AGM in Toronto, uh, the promotion of uh, Jacob Ripstein to uh, president. Uh, Jacob brings a vast array of skill, leadership qualities, teamwork, list goes on and on. Uh, in uh, five short months, he has really shown and demonstrated to the rest of my C-suite and to my board uh, what leadership really uh, means. And so as we get bigger and, and our wings get uh, further sprouted into different countries, even more than the countries I've dem uh, shown on the previous slide, you need this sort of skill and leadership. And uh, we continue to be on the hunt uh, for, for more in uh, what I call the C-suite. You gotta stay focused on quality. If it's one thing that I'm, well, a number of things, but one key moment uh, that I'm very proud of is when I joined back in May of 2014, the Afria journey, I brought with a mentality of quality. Uh, Coley Cacciolani and John Servini, they knew everything about the greenhouse grow, uh, seasonality, using mother nature, et cetera. But what they didn't know is the heightened level of quality. So I was uh, very fortunate to be able to pull and tug a few key people from Jameson to, to join me over the ensuing six months. Our DNA is the pharma background. Our DNA is quality. And we are very, very focused. And where we uh, stumble, we will correct and, and, the, and, and immediately make sure that that uh, quality story continues to be one of our biggest flags that we wave. Scale. Uh, in a nutshell, I would suggest to you that uh, by December, early January of 2018, 19, the completion of the retrofit of a Fria Diamond, this beautiful community called Leamington will be the home of 2.5 million square feet of greenhouse and another 500,000 feet of infrastructure. That's 3 million feet of campus space between a Fria One and a Fria Diamond designated for cannabis. So yes, John, I think we can call Leamington the tomato cannabis capital of Canada. Um, and there are many other licensed producers who either have already committed to or are really on the hunt for an expansion of their harvest, their, their capacity of cultivation footprint in Leamington. There's so many benefits here, uh, the list goes on and on and we know them all. Uh, it's just not Mother Nature. Uh, it's the whole supply chain and, and the, uh, the feeder industry that, that services all of our needs. Scale is important. As a catalyst, draw attention to uh, my last quarterly statement, our costs went up, uh, both cash costs and all-in costs. And uh, there was a lot of one-timers built into that quarter, um, and uh, we make no excuses for it. It's, it's the cost of growing. And the growing, I mean by expansion of capacity. Uh, it's, it's a cost of labor uh, that may not have been as efficient as it will be a year from now, given the growth mode of uh, various construction uh, sections. We will be the leader of cost per gram in the yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I'm gonna to suggest to you that once we are in full crop rotation, and I'm looking at May or June of 2019, and full crop rotation means all of our part four, five, and Afria diamond retrofits are completed and Health Canada approved, and it's four months from seed to sale, that by May, June of 2019, we will be on track to be harvesting in excess of 20,000 kilos 
a month. That's a month. That's huge when you look at the potential Canadian marketplace uh, throughout 2019 and early 2020. Our costs, our cash costs should be, and our expectations. So I got some of my key guys right here, my grower, labor, et cetera. Uh, Bob, John, less than 80 cents a gram. All in, now that we're gonna have a greater proportion of rec sales versus medical, and the duplication of inside, outside packaging, yes, our, our all-in costs will go, go up because of the packaging requirements by Health Canada. But we will still be somewhere just a tick above a dollar to dollar ten per gram. And I challenge any licensed producer who hasn't morphed into a greenhouse, and I, I talk about true Dutch greenhouse with the level of automation that Afria is building in to our campus here at Afria One. That's important. I want to get back to the pricing that I made re reference to earlier. I will be SAQ's best partner by mid of next year. By, by that I mean I will be the first to approach them and say, you know my average of $5 blended? I'm going to reduce it. I'm not going to speculate today how much, but I will be the first to address his issue in Quebec. And every province, I may add, has the same concerns that our pricing is just too high to really thwart and mitigate of substance organized crime. And I can only do so by scalability. Finally, innovation. There's a lot of talk after I'm done my keynote, so I'll, I'll leave innovation uh, for others to do deeper dives. I'll just tip the iceberg. Innovation of equipment, of process, of extraction, refining the oil distillates, um, fractionated distillates, water solubility with bioabsorption. When you look at products of tomorrow that are going to be in demand and with Health Canada's uh, acceptance and approval, there's, all, there's a host of innovation that is around the corner that we're working on already that is necessary to make sure that your ingredient, and again, you've heard this expression, I'll say it again, cannabis is an ingredient as we move forward. It's, it's important to have this sort of innovation, uh, not just in dialogue. You have to be out there ahead of the curve. You have to search for those scientific research centers, uh, and we have many of them. Uh, some under royalty, some licensing, some JVs, and some are active potential acquisitions. That's where you have to be. No one company has all this talent in-house. And if you do, you've, you've really misaligned uh, your, your funding. Leamington. I'll let you read some of the quotes, but at the end of the day, we chose Leamington not just because Coley and John and I are from this area. We knew Mother Nature at her best can be one of the best cost control features that any licensed producer could ask for. We haven't done this math in several quarters, but I know my CFO, uh, who is not here today, he's in Toronto on, a, on an investor um, round table. What Afria spends in one year on hydro. The average licensed producer with publicly disclosed information spends in one month. We are one twelfth. We have less lights, the intensity is less. They have to have it 12 hours every day, 365 days, we don't. And they have to air condition in the summer months, we don't, we use venting. When you look at that math, we all know here in Ontario what the kilowatt hour cost is, it's, it's a huge cost driver for us. Huge. Leamington, Ontario. Our mission, global. Key word in there that when we, when we put together our mission statement over four years ago and reinvented it a few years ago, we made sure we added the word global. It is a global footprint. What Canada is doing is the envy of many other countries. There are 32 countries now globally that have uh, allowed medical cannabis legally. Uh, and yes, Uruguay was the first country 
uh, to introduce legalized rec use, uh, but they're not a G20 country, so I'm really not overly uh, excited about uh, what they've done. Canada is truly the first. The world is watching us. And for us to now take the, the, the Canadian flag, the Health Canada regs that have continued to be nurtured under ACMPR today, where we're heading in, in terms of legalization of, of rec retail, who can sell, where can sell, the, the product uh, introductions that are forthcoming, as I've already shared, that is everyone is expecting. The world is watching. Germany is watching. Australia has mimicked in many ways our ACMPR. We have the ability of being a big, big player on a big global footprint. You know, again, it's a Fria. We're just a few farm boys from Leamington, Ontario. Will we need assistance as we reach out? Absolutely. But that's why we look at certain acquisitions. That's why the leadership opportunities of bringing skill set, whether it's in Toronto, it's in Leamington, it's in Frankfurt, it's in Verona, Italy, it's in Portugal. This is where the traction has to go. You, you really need to think tomorrow, plan today, but hire yesterday. And, and we're well down the path. This is, a, many of you have probably seen this sort of pyramid structure. Uh, I'm not gonna be teaching a business course here today, but when you look at the building blocks and you have to build it from the ground up, everybody that has ever built a house understands the foundation is key. Without that, uh, the roof line's never gonna hold. Same thing at Afria. When we started way back four and a half years ago, uh, five and a half, including R&D, we knew that there were certain fundamentals that are necessary to set the groundwork, to set the framing of the Afria company. Um, and quality was always one. We knew scalability. Um, just as a footnote, if we did one thing wrong, we never thought big enough. Uh, shame on us. We were already doing part three when part two was still under construction. We had board approval to do part four before part three was completed. We always were, were managing our cash flows. Uh, we we're really understanding of funding. Never knew when the uh, money on Bay Street was gonna dry up. So we built what we thought was the next phase of, of meeting the uh, supply curve versus demand. Um, we always guessed wrong. Uh, so it wasn't that long ago, less than a year ago, we took the big jump and approached Chris and Benji Mastinardi, uh, brand new facility of 30 acres, a free of diamond we've referred to it as, and we approached them with a business opportunity of a JV, uh, and they jumped at it uh, rather quickly. Um, probably not so much of giving up their greenhouses uh, and the tomato crop they were otherwise gonna plant, but I think they also understood the management of Afria, our traction, our story, our commitment, where the cannabis space was, where it was heading, and it was a pretty easy decision for them. So when we look at building blocks, that, that was key, uh, capacity. You then move forward, and then the international again appears. Part of our, of our mission statement uh, is, is also embedded here, global. If Afria wants to be an industry leader, best in class, um, you really, really need to look total globe. Back at Jameson, when I started in 1993, we were in four countries. In uh, 2013, when we sold, we were in 44 countries. And it, it provided tremendous value. So, so I've been well aware uh, and well experienced in understanding if you penetrate countries that you have traction and, and there is a, a business model that has sustainability, those are the countries that we need to attack now. And finally, back to what today is somewhat about innovation and I'll let others speak to that. There's a footprint of our medical cannabis um, platform. Um, the revenue generator that uh, started our journey continues to be uh, very important to us. And if there's any misunderstandings, our medical platform is not shoved to the sidelines. Uh, we're, we're, we're actually in the middle of another re-engineering of our next growth uh, in, in terms of medical in Canada. And, and that is important, again, when you look at the international. International is all medical. 
and you need to really have the stamp of approval from Health Canada. You really have to demonstrate your patient care team, your professional outreach, um, whatever science you can bring to the table, whether it is patient anecdotal or certain other levels of uh, new drug discovery. That's what these countries want to know, that this company called Afria is truly a medical DNA and it just happens to now play in the recreational space in Canada. By the way, we do have an award-winning patient care team, second to none. If there's any patients of Afria in the audience, um, I'm hoping your experience uh, with my team has, has been uh, um, meeting and actually exceeding your expectations. Okay, back to REC, innovation. We launched with five brands. Again, I spent a lot of time with my marketing team as, as searched coast to coast, lots of consultants, a lot of focus groups over a year and a half, and we, we landed on five brands. Each brand speaks to the soft touch points of the consumer that they are trying to reach out to with these products. Um, I'm not saying a year from now, these are the five, we could be dropping one and adding two or three. Time will tell. You have to understand where is the consumer's expectations tomorrow. So these are the brands, but there are other product rollouts that are going to be happening, and they may or may not be captured inside one of these five brands. But they speak to every path of life. What Coley calls the scotch and cigar drinker, way out there in terms of... Uh, uh, high expectations of the experience of smoking uh, all the way down to Mrs. Smith who uh, has never used it. She's very law-abiding. Now it's legal. She may try. Uh, she's got the girls coming over tonight and it's just a fun experience but not from a, a, a total uh, boy I love that taste or uh, did you look at the color of that smoke? Uh, boy, those ashes look good. <laughs> Just a very quick comment. Uh, at our AGM, there was a question on what's the status of Shoppers Drug Mart. Shoppers actually received a full licensed producer status several, several weeks ago. Uh, they're now really moving their pig through the python in, in getting the, uh, the infrastructure through their provincial distribution centers. Uh, again, at their end, some supply chain issues. Every province needs their own excise tax stamps. Uh, very chaotic. So we are working with them on how we can alleviate some of that um, baggage at their end and, and making sure that Afria remains as their preferred vendor. Uh, all, all systems go. Uh, they should be online very shortly in terms of their online infirmary. and. They have very, very high expectations given the relationship between pharmacist and doctor, um, their professional outreach programs that they have developed online with their pharmacists and, uh, and, and reach outs to their, their doctor, lunch and learns, et cetera, is, is very, very exciting. And again, I, I'm proud to say that Afria was the first reach out, the first LP signed up, and we are their primary. Lost in all of this, probably about five, six months ago, was an arrangement we press released on Southern Glacier. Southern Glacier is the largest uh, spirits distributor in Canada, uh, largest in the US, uh, footprint globally. It was important for us to make a decision at the very early stages. Do we bring this sort of street level engagement in-house and hire an army of people uh, well in advance, costing a lot of money, and not really understanding the true skill set we need versus the individuals we hire, what they bring to the table. A lot of situational issues and concerns. We went to Southern Glacier and over the next two months um, negotiated and, and concluded on an amazing contractual arrangement uh, three years plus a two-year renewal on being our eyes, ears, feet on the street uh, because of their, their relationship, their experience, their professionalism, all their consumer data points dealing with spirits and liquor control boards. Uh, th this was 
really, really the, the uh, beginning of putting a formal business plan in total together. And no other LP was thinking this way. They were trying to hire people in every province and regional managers and district managers. And <coughs> excuse me, when, when you look at the complexity and, and uh, the amount of human error that can, can come to the table when you're hiring uh, from, a, from afar, uh, we, f we felt this was most strategic and uh, it will really pay off dividends for us and the, and the cost structures that we have embedded in our formulation is, is, uh, is very, very um, healthy for our income statement. I've already spoken about the cost structures so I won't go into it again, but as you all know, we are the lowest. I, I know I've got my IR people here, just say Lovic. No, we are the lowest. If one understands all of the costs that necessarily should go into costs goods sold and there's no, no funny games, no uh, income statement, realignment and reallocations, all of those costs that touch the plant called costs that get sold, when you do the pure math, we are the lowest. And again, last quarter was an aberration. Um, this quarter that we're into also will be probably on the high side, but I can tell you with the strongest degree of confidence that when our part four and five of FRIA one is completed and a FRIA diamonds retrofit is completed, we will be knocking it out of the park. Our level of automation, and maybe the catalysts are gonna have something on their uh, podcast one day on, on showing robotics, is beyond, beyond description. Um, and I don't care whatever any other LP is saying, they're, they're embedding in their, their capacity of growth. They can do what they want, but what we have, there's no textbook. We have taken the best from Germany, from Italy, from the Netherlands, and yes, even from Ohio. And the skill set, not just what we have embedded in Afria, but the surrounding professionals that we have in this community is second to none. And I'm talking from HVAC to mechanical to electrical to fabricating. This community should be very, very proud of the skill set that they bring to the table and allowed Afria to do what we're doing in automation. Um, and obviously led by John and Coley, uh, they're forward thinking on how to remove labor. And that's very important in, in, in reducing the, the cash cost program. As some of you may have heard in previous media interviews with me, um, it was late July, early August. We hired 50 new uh, greenhouse uh, laborers by Saturday we had eight left and therefore uh, resulting in destruction of almost 14,000 plants because we couldn't get to the timeliness of harvest. Well ladies and gentlemen we all know machines they don't go on breaks there's no vacation uh, they don't get sick uh, you can sweat the acid 24 7. We would be otherwise looking at over 300 more bodies and we're looking at probably close to 80 now in our part four expansion here at Afria One, had we not built, brought in and built into the expansion automation. And so it, it's, it's, it's very important when you look at this cost structure. I've already spoken about capacity. Strong, strong confidence I have, and I've screamed this out, and. If analysts are in the room, or if the catalysts are taking notes, which I know you do constantly, uh, you can quote me. By May or June of 2019, with a caveat, Health Canada comes and does their thing on a timely basis, <laughs> um, we will be kicking ass. 20,000 keys a month um, is, is, is our full expectations. And when you start producing that much, you are really looking at, at a cost grind that is gonna allow for Afria to go back to these provincial regulators and meet their sweet spot price point, or at least get close to what Jean-Francois of the SAQ Quebec wants. So this, this becomes very, very important, critical mass to scale. And there's only a few of us, ladies and gentlemen, in Canada that are capable of even talking about this, let alone delivering. There's only a handful. And if there's any LP out there today that's raising money to expand their capacity, they're late in the game. 
they're absolutely going to be late in the game. My cost structures uh, will allow me to price out almost anybody up to the level of uh, 255,000 keys annually. I know you've heard me talk international quite a bit. Just a, another repositioning of the flags that we have planted. And the most recent one was in South America, LATAM assets that we secured, um, Colombia being the pillar, Argentina, uh, personally, that I opened up a, a year and a half ago and remain very, very excited about. Longer path is through the health authorities, uh, it's through research and development, it's through studies with a university and a hospital in Buenos Aires. Uh, that's the pathway of, of success. It's slow. Um, not meeting expectations of investors in terms of ROI, but when you hit that, you hit it. And, and therefore, Argentina is very, very important to our future growth in Latin America. And Colombia, again, I think Coley is uh, going to lead the next uh, team visit, uh, scoping out the uh, beginning of the, uh, the construction build of Greenhouse. Now, these aren't Dutch greenhouses, so if you ever see a picture of them, they're not going to be these beautiful things you see in Leamington, uh, but they're standard for South American uh, climate. Uh, I think we're just like four degrees north of the equator. So that puts the sun 12 hours uh, sunshine and 12 hours darkness, exactly what the plant needs. So there's a lot of, a lot of excitement, a lot of work necessary, too, to get Columbia to the level where we expect them to be a, a, a creative material a part of uh, the global footprint of Afria. And Jamaica. Um, quite frankly, Jamaica was a requirement to make that LATAM acquisition. It wasn't high in my list. Um, I'm not a Jamaica Gold uh, user, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, the halo effect. How can you be a global player when you're not in, in the market that the world can identify with. So we have uh, um, all three licenses uh, by virtue of this acquisition. We've got a grower that is a 19 can Cannabis Cup winner, whatever that means. Uh, just a lot of, lot of awards. I think he grows good bud. And um, I know people call it ganja houses, but uh, the construct of up to six uh, herb houses over the next six to eight months in in Jamaica, uh, whether it's for the uh, local population or tourism, uh, our go-to-market strategies will will decide on that. R and D. To the left, I've kind of commented on it's very very important to to understand you need the input ingredients necessary to make the products that are going to be required tomorrow. I made mention of water solubility. That's been a, a buzzword. But without proper bioabsorption, water solubility becomes a nothing. Um, so you have to look at the science. And, and those organizations who, who really have developed the uh, processing techniques to make sure that what you're drinking or what you're eating is going to get into your, your, your bloodstream and be bioabsorbed so that you get the effect uh, within 30 minutes, 20 minutes not uh, 80, two hours, three hours later. But it's to the right side of the screen that really differentiates Afria from many other licensed producers. Again, without naming names, the type of alliances that we're doing globally, the type of researchers that have gravitated to Afria in terms of our integrity, our management style, what our capabilities are, our compassion. We are we're already looking at the future and no one even knows about this future. Super producer plants on the verge of being genetically modified, but producer plants that the THC is throughout the plant, not just in the buds and sugar leaves, but all leaves, all stems, even the stock. We're looking at risk uh, mitigation of pest control by building in 
certain enzymes and proteins into the plant to ward off red spider mite, um, mitigate um, mildew mold. These are the these are ag players in a laboratory with test tubes and, and really moving the science forward. That is what is necessary to continue to ex expand on your yield, your harvest, getting more grams per plant or per square meter, uh, less plants that need to be destroyed or less buds that get cast aside for oil extraction uh, but stay in, in a pure flower form. This is what is necessary, and we're putting in the time, the effort, the energy. Some are licensed royalties, uh, some are uh, down the path of an outright acquisition. This is what is necessary to stay ahead of the curve. This is what investors expect from best-in-class companies. So there is a, a chart of where we are and where the alignment of uh, partnerships are. It's just a testimony that Afria is more than just a low cost producer. Afria is more than just three million square feet of campuses here in Leamington. Afria is more than just launching into 10 different countries. Afria is truly moving the needle and we've got a lot of work that is, that is not even expressed in press releases. Why? Afria is not about the soundbite of the day. When we press release, it's factual, it's historical, not forward-looking. Uh, we're not talking about things that we're expecting to happen. And analysts, and the catalyst included, really, really have to take the task, uh, license producers, and hold them accountable for what they've said, but never delivered on. And that's one message that this investor community that's in the audience really needs to understand. Go back. Do your homework. Who said what and where are they? I better stop there because I'm just about to put myself in trouble. <laughs> Avante, again, the laboratory, GMP, EU GMP laboratory in uh, north of Toronto, uh, part of the Novera acquisition. Uh, we're retrofitting it as we speak to make it uh, processing EU GMP compliant necessary to penetrate in the front door in a, in a long-term way countries like Germany before we get our whole vertical plan in country cultivation uh, in, in, um, in line. Green Tank, um, after many, many, many um, suppliers of vape pens, uh, we landed on Green Tank for the entry level, uh, what we call the mass line. Um, we, we're, we have an understanding and uh, a movement forward with PACS. Um, there are many, many vape pen opportunities. We now have our go-to-market strategies hitting three different touch points of consumers with vaporizing pens, whether disposable uh, or refillables, or as the new uh, category is reusables, and there's a slight difference. And this isn't just an incubation on paper um, and using vegetable oil as understanding the, the, the technology of A-Pens. As many of you know, uh, we still have a relationship with Liberty Health Sciences. Uh, it's a company that uh, almost two years ago uh, was, was created uh, by Afria uh, for investors who wanted to enjoy the U.S. market play uh, we were way ahead of the curve, uh, Florida license. In Florida, these products, some of these that I've ref referred to, but also, and more, most importantly, vape pens and the PAX relationship, uh, they're in market. So we're actually selling vape pens, Liberty is. Some are Liberty brand, some are, or which is the Afria brand under license, Soleil, and they want to also now under royalty grab our, our Riff brand. So our story, our reach goes, goes deep into Florida, but the point here is we're not waiting for consumer purchase and behavior and feedback. We've been selling this for over a year in Florida. It's the same green tank technology, same PAX technology. So we think we've got a leg up because we have absolute feedback now from consumers on their preferences on disposables versus refillables slash reusables. We started 
and this is important to note, we started uh, with about an 8% leaker factor. That's huge, that's unbearable, that, that's, that's uh, brand destruction if you ever try to launch that. Then with enough skill, with enough leadership, uh, engineering over in China, we got it down to five, to four. And the most recent uh, update I received, we're less than 2% leakers in our Florida vape pens. That's unheard of. Even in the tobacco e-pen industry, that's unheard of. So again, the, the, the strengths, the bench strength, the, the reach that Afria has, in this case using uh, Liberty as one of our vehicles for research, is, is absolutely gonna put us into a leadership role. Oh, I don't know. There's a few faces up here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but I think a lot of Leaving Tonight's know who John and Coley, Coley are. Uh, Gary came with me from Jameson. Christelle was chief legal of New Vera. Um, Carl was a board member. Jacob is a recently promoted president. And then finally, Hendrik, uh, who is our um, in-country Germany leader, came with the New Vera acquisition but also is heading up our Denmark expansion, our Netherlands expansion. Very, very key, both Henrik and uh, his uh, top guys uh, over in Frankfurt. Uh, without money, uh, a lot of things couldn't happen. And we've been very, very fortunate to, to have the right story and the right respect on Bay Street, uh, both uh, retail and institutional. Uh, we still have in Canada the largest uh, private uh, pri uh, raise on a, uh, on, a, on a bought deal basis. Um, we continue to have various banks, chartered Schedule A banks, uh, knocking our door down uh, with various reach outs for term debt. Um, and I know WFCU is uh, on the speaker podium this afternoon. I don't know if Dave is here, but uh, thank you WFCU for being one of our first term debt provider um, almost a year and a half ago. Um, very thankful for, for your support and, and believing in the Afria story. That is the conclusion of my formal address. Uh, Blue, do we have time for some Q&A or am I? Take it from Q&A. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, until I'm told not. I guess cue people is what I'll do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if anybody in the audience has any questions um, that they'd like to ask Vic, there's two mics on either side of the room. Um, we'd ask you to maybe go to one of those mics so that we're able to hear your question. Okay. Well, with Coley's good looks, everybody wants to work for Afria. <laughs> the question is the uh, threat of other licensed producers coming into the uh, Essex County region and uh, their demands on the labor force, whether it's uh, skill leadership or in greenhouse, and how is Afria going to respond to it? I'm going to take the easy part of the answer first and then more difficult one. When it comes to general laborers, the hourly, I've already explained to, to the audience the issue we had late July, early August. We've mitigated that, hopefully eliminated. We continue to work with the Farm Labor Board on offshore uh, employee how, uh, uh, workers. And again, led by John Jacob, John Cervini, we continue. Uh, I think, help me out, John, we just got how many Hondurans uh, signed up? 12. This is a conti and 10 more in a few weeks. This is a continuation of who we are as agriculture growers in a greenhouse in Leamington and how the government is really trying to support what we're doing here. Offshore is gonna be very important for us going forward. We've got bunk houses we're building. Every greenhouse grower, anybody in here knows exactly the importance of, 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 of lodging, et cetera, et cetera. So we feel pretty comfortable with our path of the uh, labor force in a greenhouse, 
But that's also where automation becomes very important and you can see strategically now, when I can move from 300 to less than 100 by automation, that's key. When it comes to leadership of strategy, of leading execution, every licensed producer is constantly looking for more of this gray matter. It's necessary to really cover every activity in every region of the world. And I haven't even spoken about the US of A yet. So as we look to expand, I think the Afria story from a Toronto office perspective, uh, our doors are being knocked down. Whether it's, it's marketing, sales, which we, as I said, outsourced with Southern Glacier, um, digital, um, consumer data analytics, those are, those are well sought after jobs. Everyone wants to, to come A, into the space and, and B, into Afria. In Leamington, believe it or not, where you would think it's tough to get some of this talent on board, I'm gonna to suggest to you that this space called cannabis, medical, recreational, where it's heading toward, it is the hot one. It is the, and you don't have to be a user either. This is about a, a fledgling industry that has a run rate beyond belief. We're talking billions of dollars of annual revenues. We're talking a market that's bigger than the beer market in three years from now in Canada. So yes, it's a big move from the city slicker of Toronto to, to the uh, bedroom community of Leamington, but once they get here and they see what we have to offer, um, the security, the safety, the beauty, uh, affordability, uh, and then they meet the team and they see who we are. It's, it's, not, it's, not, gonna, it's not a a hard task for us today. Okay, I do think we have a question over at the mic. On this Two side. questions. Two? Okay. Um, you made reference to Liberty, your current relationship. How do you see the future of Liberty going forward, Vic? I'd like to say no comment. <laughs> Liberty is at a crossroad of its journey. Um, Liberty is a single state, Florida, albeit bigger than all of Canada, and we remain very supportive. I think there'll be up to uh, 10 dispensaries uh, opened up by the end of November, um, slower than expected, but finally hitting the, uh, the metrics of dispensary openings. But like many other US companies, and Canadian, when they now come to the CSE or the, the V, they're looking for money. And if you are not a multi-state business plan, uh, you're having trouble uh, gaining the ears and, and the pocketbooks of institutional investors. So Liberty has, is, is, is at a crossroad. It has a number of options it's considering um, and has to make a choice uh, soon. Soon, not by desperation, it's just it's gotta move on with its life. Does it stay single? and with the cash reserves it has, uh, does it execute on Massachusetts? Uh, it has, through a joint venture with the Schottensteins um, processing and a dispensary in Ohio. Uh, it's got an application in for uh, New Jersey. Uh, in two weeks will we'll be known whether they're award winner or not. So it, it has a lot of optionality in front of it, but it's gotta choose its pathway and march forward soon. Next question, I was very, uh, your comments about moving the business from the underground in reference to the organized crime and Hell's Angels. This is kind of a personal question. Um, that being the case, uh, what, you, know, you think of organized crime, I think of the mob. Did you personally feel threatened in any way? Can you repeat that last part of the question? Far, far as, organized, you think of organized crime, the underground, I think of the mob. And you're trying to take basically cash out of their pockets. Do you feel threatened in any way? Personally? Not personally. Um, I think the risks come more from the commercial side. I think organized crime understands that under ACMPR, what Health Canada has started, um, the trains left the station. They know this. So now it's about how do they gain and, and retain the loyalty of their illegal consumers today. I think the risks more are on the end pricing 
and what that means to licensed producers, back to my SAQ Quebec example. From a personal safety perspective, no, we've never had any situational issues. I know we've got a lot of network within um, law enforcement, I'll leave it at that, uh, undercover, and uh, they have never surfaced anything that would otherwise uh, give us uh, cause for, for concern. Um, now, when we went to Bogota, Colombia, <laughs> uh, did we have uh, uh, personal safety? Yes. Do we have a, a chase vehicle? Yes. Were we in armored cars? Yes. But that was over overabundance of caution. Uh, there was never any risk, even, even in Colombia. Um, I think organized crime knows we're here. And we being not just Afria, but Aurora, can, uh, all of the LPs, uh, we're all bringing commerce above ground. They know that. And it's up to them to try to retain as much of their population of consumers as possible. Okay. I think that's all we have time for for questions because we're already running behind. But Vic, are you sticking around for yeah. the day? Okay, so Vic will be here for the rest of the day? Most. Okay, for most of the day. So over lunch, maybe breaks. If anybody wants to, they can come up and ask you some questions. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you speak today. <laughs>